How happy are you, Tim? Well, of course I'm happy. And of course I just thank the people of Invercargill. I mean, every one of them who voted, thank you. It just means so much to me. I've worked hard. I've done my best. I feel I've been honest. We have a few hiccups always in local government, but I front up and accept democracy. And I'm just so much... Um, I'm just so thankful for the support that I've had, quite overwhelmed by it. How much of a threat do you think Suzanne Prentice was? Well, when she started, yes, all the media turned up from all over the country and I really thought this was going to be a battle royal. And uh, But it just didn't... I, I think of all the things, the, the mistakes she made, and it's not just because I'm on this <laughs> program now with you, but not turning up to Q television to me was a decisive point in the election campaign because every other city had had these live debates going on. So there was that expectation. People now see live television as part of the democratic process. They see it in America, they see it in Britain, they see how important it is. And, you know, I mean, I got knocked out of a radio debate halfway through because the Governor-General came and tapped me on the shoulder and people still didn't like that. Even the <laughs> Queen's representative <laughs> saying, I want to talk to you when I'm in a civil defence headquarters. Um, uh, people didn't even like that, even though I'd done an hour uh, online by that stage. So it showed to me how important people feel it is to see the two of you actually exchanging ideas and, and challenging each other about your vision for the future of the city. And to me, that was, it, it was reported all over the country. And to me, that was the clear, decisive turning point of this election. And of course, one uh, point of this election is, of course, the high voter return it. One of the reasons that we're so late bringing these results is because people were rushing in at the last moment to vote. Yes, a lot of young people, a lot of young people that weren't on the electoral roll. So we've probably got the greatest number of special votes than we've ever had. Huge turnout, over 60%. We could end up being the most politically active city in New Zealand. Um, uh, so it's a tremendous result in that regard for democracy. What a fantastic achievement. Mm. All right, we're just going to bring up that graphic now that is uh, for Invercargill City Council, uh, Meralty, just one more time, if we can bring that up. Yeah, yes, can you bring that up? There we go. So just so everyone at home can see that, these were the results for the Invercargill mural race. Uh, Tim Shabolt on 73% at 16,275 votes. Suzanne Prentice on 24% at 5,311. <coughs> and Carl Heenan on 3% at 669. Now, we do have the results for the uh, Invercargill City Council seats. They have just been put into the system as we speak. But there has been some interesting developments there, and they will come up shortly. Here they go right now. Uh, so Darren Ludlow on 11,334. Next highest polling candidate was Jackie Kruger on 9,527. Alan Dennis on 9,398. Norman Alder, 9,217. Uh, Caroline Dean, 8,402. Graham Sycamore, 8,184. Neil Boniface, 8,000. Thelma Buck, 8,000. Uh, Lloyd Esler on 8,000. Lindsay Abbott on 7,000. Ian Pottinger on 7,000. And uh, this Graham Lewis, is it? On Graham the chemist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah on yep. 7,000. So just leave those results up for a minute there. So we have, you've lost a few councils there. Uh, Wayne Harper, Lindsay Thomas and Peter Kett have mm. all lost. Mm. Uh, they were incumbents. They were standing again. They have all gone and they've been replaced by Lloyd Esler, Ian Pottinger and Caroline Dean. And Caroline Dean, an interesting one there. She was uh, a late uh, entrant into the race, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. And she's received 8,000, third highest, no, sorry, we're going across the screen that way, fifth highest polling candidate. And uh, so Peter Kitt, mm. Wayne Harper mm -hmm. and Lindsay Thomas mm -hmm. and Darren Ludo for the second time running, um, the second election running, should I say, the second highest polling candidate on 11,000 votes. Quite so too. Some interesting results there, Tim. Your thoughts mm -hmm. on those? Mm -hmm. And then the golden question, Deputy Meralty. Well, Darren Ludlow, I mean, he's been consistent right up there. And a lot of people before said, oh, it's because he was on radio every day. But now he's not. He's more in the backroom role, although he's still got quite a high profile on radio. Um, Jackie Kruger, I mean, there's consistency and hard work. Mm -hmm. And I think she is one of the most respected councillors. 
um, maybe it would be good to have a woman deputy mayor. Um, it gets that gender balance thing happening and no one could accuse her of being lazy or not being conscientious. She would ring, read every word of every agenda that's ever been published, I'd say. So uh, a lot of interesting, and, and but of course, you know, you can't um, deny some of the new blood, I guess, coming through. Um, uh, it, it's interesting to see those results. I mean, Saskia Newlands, um, never run before. Um, she obviously made quite an impression there. And uh, Carolyn Dean, of course, had the, I guess, advantage of being so involved mm. in rubbish mm. recycling, mm. having mm. worked for the council in that area, and a very effective billboard campaign. And I think those trailer billboards moving them around the city like that, um, I think they, they had a very positive impact. Um, otherwise, except for the ones who, uh, and again, I think the new ones aboard, a chemist south of Invercargill, um, very well liked, very well respected, I think he'll do well. Pottinger, of course, is gung-ho, hard hat, construction worker sort of image that he presented, obviously that um, was well supported as, as well. So it's, uh, um, I'm sure there'll be a lot more analysis going on, but in terms of first impressions, it's a very interesting outcome indeed.